What's up everybody? In today's video I have my Schumacher Kugelaidon and the manual for this car and I'm going to go through the basic tips and tricks that I have learned that I want to share with you guys. Some of them are already in the manual but some of them are not so I'll basically tell Orphan about it so you can build your cars just like me and prepare for your next race exactly like me. So tune in and enjoy the video now. If you're new on the channel, I'm Michael, I'm a professional RC driver and basically I'm trying to share the information to you guys about RC racing and RC cars so you guys can be more successful in your RC racing careers. And now really, let's go back to the video. Starting off with step number two in the manual, a very important thing here is not to lock your bearings. Remember, you have to use Loctite and for the screws, make sure everything stays tight when you're driving. And it's really important to remember to use like uh, tweezers or use a driver, a screwdriver to put the thread lock inside the thread so you don't put any on the bearing so it doesn't lock. Now going into step number five, Using the ball stud washers for the captive ball studs is very important for them to work correctly. So remember to have them separate so you don't make a mistake and put just a normal washer in there to make sure the captive ball stud works freely. Now on to step number seven. Remember that our shock towers are directional. There is a small step in the shock tower. So you have to set it in the correct position, in the correct direction. And remember to carefully screw in the shock tower not to damage the thread and also the shock tower might twist a bit to the left side of the car because the thread is right sided so remember to position it in the right way so both sides of the car feel identical. In the step number eight of the manual, as it is pointed out as the race tip, remember not to over tighten those crab screws. It is very important and make sure that the hub feels freely and it moves freely for ultimate performance on the track. In step number 12, with the front wishbones assembly to the front end of the car, as it is pointed out, you have to remember that the whole suspension works freely it is also crucial for the performance of the car so if there is a need for that you have to file the inside of the wishbone so the hinge pin and the wishbone work together nicely and everything moves freely so it is definitely worth doing that even though you might think it's it's not something you should do but definitely you should be doing that to make sure your car feels perfect Another tip for step 12 is not to screw the bumper too tight as it might make is as it might make the suspension not move freely. Step number 13 is the shock build. I'm not going to show you guys how I do it, but Trish made a really good video on his channel. So the link is right here. Go check it out later to see how we're building our shocks. Going a bit further to step number 22, we have the gearbox assembly. And I would suggest you guys using the lithium grease as I have shown in one of my previous videos how I changed the gear diff in my tour drive. I used the MR33 lithium grease it makes the gears work a bit longer and it lengthens its lifespan and also the car sounds much better with it. Step number 26 is the start of the gear diff assembly and if you'd like to learn how to do that go check out another Trish's channel right here. Here is the link to see how we build our diffs. It is also very crucial for the performance of your two drive buggy. 
coming into step number 31 we have the rear shock tower assembly and as I have mentioned with the front shock tower the shock tower is directional and it's very important to make it parallel to the chassis so both sides of the car feel exactly the same step number 33 the lucky number 33 from Mark Reinhardt this is the slipper assembly it is also very important how you set your slipper. I'm able to do a, another video about that in the future. So if you'd like to see this, please leave a comment and let me know if you have to learn how I set my slipper for different surfaces. Right after that is step number 34 with the rear wishbone assembly and the hub assembly. And same as previously in the front end of the car, make sure everything works freely. Uh, file the wishbone if that's necessary and make sure that everything is very smooth so you receive the ultimate performance from your Schumacher Kuga Leydon. Going into step number 35, we have the axle assembly and in the manual it is shown to use the axle grease. I actually use some of the dry fluid lubricants to make sure that no dirt comes into the axles. As you can see here is an example from the Schumacher website. You can check it out and use it in your car. I think it's much better than the grease because the grease might catch some of the dust or clay when you're running outdoors. So it's definitely worth to try out those dry fluids. This will be it for Schumacher Google on build tricks and, and tips. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. There is not much information about it because most of it is already in the manual as I have answered some of the questions in the Q&A. We develop some things and then we make sure it's in the manual so all of you guys when you buy the new kit can assemble the car the same way as we do but also we developed a few tricks and, and ideas over the past few months so here you guys go and if you like to see same video for the four drive car let me know i'm willing to do one it's lots of fun to give you guys information so please let me know if you found this video helpful leave a like as it's shown right here subscribe to my channel turn on the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos and let me know what we'd like to see on my channel in the future and for now, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.